Hello, and welcome to Time's Ticking. Today, I'm going to be going over the luminosity in wristwatches. Many watches today have displays that are illuminated, so they can be seen in darkness. This feature has even been known to save lives. There are three current methods to achieve this. They are luminous paint, which requires light activation, tritium tubes, which are long-lasting and do not require light activation, and active lighting systems, which are battery-operated, and I'll explain each of these methods in detail after this intro. To understand why watchmakers use certain materials for their luminosity, it's important to understand a little about its history. The early practice of applying loom to wristwatches around the time of World War I involved mixing the radioactive material radium with zinc sulfide. When left alone and in proper doses, radium glows blue. However, the glow of radium alone was not bright enough and the amount required to make it useful would emit too much harmful radiation. Combining radium with zinc sulfide fixed brightness and radiation problems. The radioactive properties of the radium triggered the phosphor in the zinc sulfide, causing the material to loom, and the amount of radium needed was not harmful to the wearer. With the radioactivity of the radium and the phosphorescent property of the zinc sulfide, watches using this loom were self-luminescent, as they could glow all day by themselves without any need for a trigger. While the amount of radiation from the radium was low enough to not affect the wear, it did have an impact upon those applying the material to the dial of the hands. The process was normally done by women, who are now known as the radium girls. They would lick their paintbrushes to get the point fine enough to paint the small markers on the hands of the dial. As a result, they swallowed radium which over time led to a variety of illnesses and some even died as a result of the ingestion. Throughout the years, the unhealthy aspects of radium became more well known, and in 1968 the use of radium in wristwatches was banned, requiring alternative methods to be used. Tritium became the material of choice. Tritium was activated via the same method as radium, a radioactive material mixed with zinc sulfide. The difference between radium and tritium is the level of radiation and half-life of the materials. The half-life of radium is 1600 plus years, meaning in that time the radium will be half as effective, and for tritium the half-life is 12 years. That means that many watches from the 1960s will rarely have any loom left to see. Although tritium is less radioactive than radium, there were still some health concerns over the material during the 1960s. Dials using tritium were required to label the presence of the material typically with T or TT or H3, which is the symbol for tritium. All the while tritium was used, watch manufacturers continued to search for other alternatives outside of using a radioactive material to produce luminescence. This led to using materials that needed an outside light source, photoluminescent materials. While radioluminescent materials activate all the time, photoluminescent materials need to be charged by a light source to activate the glowing properties. In recent years, tritium has made a comeback in the form of tritium gas tubes. With that being said, this is the first method of illuminating a watch we'll go over. Tritium, also known as super heavy hydrogen, is a naturally found hydrogen atom with an atomic weight of 3, so its symbol is H3. It was first discovered by Ernest Rutherford, M. L. Oliphant, and Paul Hardikin, 1934. Tritium emits electrons through beta decay, and when these electrons interact with the phosphorus material, a fluorescent light is created that can last up to 20 years. This phenomenon is called radioilluminescence. When this tritium-powered illumination is sealed inside a glass tube, it is known as a gaseous tritium light source, also known as GTLS and is most commonly used on wristwatch faces, gun sights, and emergency exit signs. To produce a GTLS vial, the pure tritium gas is hermetically sealed inside hollow borosilicate glass tubes coated with phosphorescent paint. Together this creates a chemical reaction producing a continuous colorful glowing light. The tubes are then attached to the hands and dial in a secure manner that precludes any risk of breakage. Tritium poses no health risks to the wearer or the workers who assemble the watch. Tritium's radioactive decay produces only weak beta particles that are contained completely within the sealed glass tubes. Even if exposed, the beta particles do not possess enough energy to penetrate the outer layer of human skin, and can be stopped simply by a sheet of paper. It has also been shown that consuming one banana every other day causes the same dose as breaking a GTLS-equipped watch and absorbing 100% of its tritium content. Tritium can glow without recharge and has a half-life of 12.3 years, which means its brightness will start to fade after that 
and most manufacturers give the tritium illumination a longevity of between 10 to 25 years. After that, the watch needs to be sent back to the watch manufacturer so the tritium tubes may be replaced. Even though tritium isn't as bright as phosphorescent materials, it will glow consistently at the same level providing unlimited nighttime readability. It is perfect for people who work for long periods in dark environments, night driving, or any situation where you might not be in sunlight for long stretches of time. Most of the tritium that is used in today's watches come from Switzerland. The company that produces the majority of the tritium that is used is MB Microtech AG. If the tritium used in the watch comes from this company, you will often find the seal of the company located somewhere on the watch. Another company that supplies tritium is SRB Technologies, which is based in Canada. Watch companies that do not disclose their supplier are most likely getting their tritium from SRB Technologies. The second method of illuminating a watch is through photoluminescent materials. How this works is the property of luminosity in the pigments used in watches occurs due to the phenomenon of phosphorescence, which is a form of photoluminescence. Photoluminescence takes place when a substance absorbs photons, which are electromagnetic radiations and then radiates the photons. This period of first absorbing and then emitting the photons can get over within 10 nanoseconds or under special circumstances be delayed several minutes or a couple hours. Phosphorescence is a special form of photoluminescence where the energy absorbed from photons undergoes an intersystem crossing into a higher state of multiplicity, usually a triplet state. Once the energy is trapped, Transition from a triplet state to a singlet state cannot take place immediately, thus making the transition back to a singlet state longer, lasting minutes or even hours. The most common photoluminescent material you'll find on watches today is called Superluminova. It is a strontium illuminate based, non-radioactive, and non-toxic photoluminescent or afterglow pigment used for illuminating the markers on your watch dial, hands, or bezels. It was invented in 1993 by Nometo & Co. LTD it is considered one of the safest and most popular used luminescent materials in the industry. The material works on the principle of phosphorescence and is charged through exposure to light. It is non-radioactive and slowly decreases it in brightness until recharged again. Watches with a marking of L Swiss made indicate the use of superluminova on the dial. There are three main factors that affect the charging up of your watch loom, which include the dominant wavelength of the illuminating light, the strength of the illumination, and the length of time for which the watch is illuminated. The luminous pigment in watches is charged by the UV content of the light, and using an LED lamp will be your best bet for maximum luminosity. A general rule is that the longer the time of exposure to light, the higher the initial brightness of the loom. However, there is a limit for each level of illumination. This limit is reached more quickly at higher strengths of illumination. The Reactor Watch Company developed a special proprietary way of applying superluminova for their watches, which according to the independent tests made them the longest lasting phosphorescent watches in the world. However, while superluminova is up to five times brighter than tritium, it fades to below the level of tritium within several hours. So Reactor decided to develop a special technology for their tritium watches called Never Dark, which combines the superluminova with tritium filled tubes for the benefits of both. Whether your watch contains tritium tubes or superluminova, there are a couple factors that affect the brightness of your watch's illumination. When choosing a tritium watch, chances are you want it so that you can be able to see your watch, even in the dark. There are two types of these watches currently available. These are the T25 and the T100. Typically, the T100 watches glow a bit brighter. You may see the T100 listed as just T. The T rating refers to the total watch radiation content, which is measured in millicuries or MCI. These tubes can be created in many different colors. The colors that it glows will be based on the paint coating that is used on the tubes of the watch. Generally, green is perceived by the human eye as the brightest color and the easiest to see in the dark. Based on green at 100% brightness, the brightness output of the other colors is as follows. Ice blue is at 60%, white 60%, orange 40%. Blue GTLS is often used in diving watches as it remains visible at up to 60 meters in depth longer or deeper than any other color. Red, dark blue, and orange colors are available as well, but these are quite harder to see for some people. The last method of illuminating a watch is called active illumination or electroillumination. This requires power, typically from a battery, so this method isn't found in mechanical or automatic watches. It is also criticized for requiring two hands for light activation. To answer that criticism, Casio has watches in which the illumination is turned on when the watch is moved into the normal reading position. 
To save battery power, this function is enabled by the wearer and is automatically disabled after a short amount of time. Each method of illumination has their own advantages and disadvantages. In the end, deciding which method is best depends entirely on your own personal opinion. Comment below and tell us what you prefer. Hello and thanks for watching. If you enjoyed that video, make sure to give it a like and check out our similar videos right here. If you want to stay up to date with the new and interesting content that we create, you can subscribe to our channel which is linked right here. And lastly, if you need any help with your watch, make sure to go to our Times Ticking website which is linked right here. See you next time!